A good morning again. I am Miss Erin from the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art. Thank you once again for joining us for Doodle Bugs. This is our June 2022 class, and we are talking about Frida Kahlo today, one of my favorite artists. She likes colors, she likes animals, she likes flowers, all sorts of fun, vibrant things. Um, we are talking about her today because of a, a portrait of Frida done by a different artist that is currently on display at the Museum of Art right now in Cedar Rapids. So if you haven't been to the museum lately, go, go now, check it out. This exhibition is amazing. I will talk about that in a minute. But as of July 1st through Labor Day weekend, whenever that is, um, we have free admission for everybody at the museum. So whenever you stop by, as long as we're open, you can come in for free and check out all the cool artwork and maybe do a scavenger hunt while you're there. Um, and you'll see this portrait of Frida that I'm going to talk about in a second. So before we get started, I would love for everybody to introduce themselves. So let's start at Odessa's house. You're on mute right now, but if you want to unmute, would you like to tell us your name? Go for it. My name's Odessa. Welcome, Odessa. How old are you? Five. Awesome. Welcome, welcome. You know that in three months I'm going to turn six. Well, happy early birthday. That'll be super fun. Awesome. Let's see. Let's go to Miss Sheena's house. How are you guys today? What are your names? My name is Madeline. My name is Melina. Welcome once again, ladies. It's good to see you again. Um, they were telling me before we started recording, for the rest of you who are watching, that they did um, special hair, special outfits today for Frida. So thank you for that. I'm totally going to dress up next time. You've inspired me. And last but not least, at Valerie's house, you're, you're, would you like to tell us your name? Yeah. My name is Valerie and I am five years old. You're also five years old. Welcome, Miss Valerie. And we have, um, I forgot to ask you guys, but Madeline and Melena, how old are you all? Seven. Oh. I'm three. Welcome, welcome. We have two fives, a seven and a three. Awesome. We have a, a nice broad spectrum of numbers. So as I promised uh, before we started recording, I was telling the, the folks here with us, you're going to need a piece of paper to draw on, a pencil. Yours doesn't have to have a paintbrush on the other end like mine does, but I should point this out. Mine came from the Museum of Art. So if you want one of these, they are in the gift shop. Um, but a pencil is important. If it has an eraser, cool. If it doesn't, whatever. We can work around it. Anything else, you can do whatever you want. You can use whatever stuff you have around the house. So today I'm going to do a bunch of stuff that I had laying around at the classroom at the museum. So some of it is going to sound weird but you might have weird stuff at your house too, so whatever. I have glue, glue or a glue stick or tape is gonna be kind of important if you're gonna use a bunch of other stuff. I have old pieces of painty scraps of tissue paper that are colorful. I found these, um, these paper doilies that are heart-shaped. I don't know why I kind of thought lace was a Frida Kahlo feeling kind of thing. Um, if you did family fun day kits with us the last couple of times, we used feathers. So I have a bunch of leftover feathers. Um, I have, oh golly, this bag is full of stuff. There are stickers in there. There are little gems, there are stick on gems. Um, I have cupcake wrappers. So if you have any of these little guys around the house, the first ones I picked up are really huge. I don't think those are gonna work, but I have these little baby ones that might work. They might make nice flowers. I also have 
these little things, do you know these little things, these brass fasteners? I don't know if I'm going to use them, but I thought I'd bring them. Just I have ones. I have these little yeah, sticky dots. I don't know. I might use them. They might be kind of fun. We'll see. I also brought this ruffly yarn that I found. I'm not sure what I'd do with it, but who knows? Um, I also, and here's the weird part, you guys. At the museum, we have used this before because they, everybody who's talked to me before knows how I feel about glitter. I hate glitter, glitter is evil, but I like sparkly. So I have a friend who sells makeup and she gives me her old makeup, her samples and eyeshadows like this or face powders like this actually have mica in them, which is sparkly. Whoop. So if you look at it really closely, I don't know if you can see this on the, it falls out too. I don't know if you can see this on the screen, but it's got sparkles in it. This is my way of getting sparkles without using glitter. So I might use makeup on my picture today that we're gonna make, we'll see. Um, you might also need scissors. If you're gonna cut paper, the black ones the paper so whatever you wanna do is fine. Um, but before we get to the making part, I wanted to show you Frida, the person that we're talking about today. So I'm gonna share my screen and hopefully you'll still be able to hear me once we do this. But it starts off with a little video. This is Frida in real life, some home video of Frida at her house. There's her husband, Diego. I think that they're pointing in the tree because one of her monkeys is in the tree. She had pet monkeys. So this is their house, which is now a museum that you can visit. And you'll notice that there's a red pyramid on the side and all these little um, statues all over the place because she collected those. This is the other side of their front door, more statues. There's a little pond, I think, or fountain um, with trees and flowers and plants. And there's a close up of the little statues in there. There's Frida holding one of her little statues. And there's Frida's studio. Do you notice what is sitting in front of her easel where she's painting? Anybody see that? What is that? A wheelchair. A wheelchair. Yeah, it's a wheelchair. And we're going to talk about that in the story we read about Frida today. But that's important. That's a big part of her life. But you'll also notice that she's painting some fruit that's called a still life because it sits still while you paint it. I always think those are kind of handy. Um, and then look at all the paints on her table there and all of her paint brushes. She's got a lot. There's Frida, she's laying in bed because she got hurt um, a couple of different times. She hurt her back really badly. So she's wearing a cast that goes all the way up to her shoulders almost. And if you notice, there's a little hole in the cast that's almost at her belly button, but she's painted all over her cast using that mirror that she's holding on to. And in the hole, on her belly, she painted a window. I think that's fun. She's very creative. Uh, this is her painting in bed again, and a little friend of hers watching her paint. Can you imagine trying to paint while you're lying down like that? Hard. Hard. Yeah, I bet. She made it look easy which is pretty awesome. So this is one of her self-portraits. She made a lot of self-portraits and that just means pictures of herself that she made. But you can see one of her pet monkeys on her shoulder. There's a, a cat there. There's some butterflies and there's a, a bird tied to her necklace. But I want you to notice her eyebrows. Do you see how they touch in the middle? Frida's eyebrows 
touched in the middle and she loved that. She thought that her eyebrows looked like the wings of a bird. And so she painted her eyebrows very dark and she connected them in the middle whenever she painted herself. Here's another self portrait. Some of her portraits have her lying in bed because she stuck in bed with that cast on her for so long. There's another one. I know this looks weird, but it's actually in the story I'm going to read you. So keep an eye out for that. There's another portrait and her eyebrows are turning into a bird in this one, which is super cool. And if you look at her earrings, do you see her earrings? It looks like a weird little hand. Okay, so I always thought those were kind of creepy. And you know, I like creepy. But then I learned that those earrings that look like hands were actually a gift to her from another really famous artist, Pablo Picasso. Do you know that name? Yeah. If you've ever heard of Picasso, yeah. he's a really famous artist too. So apparently- he makes paintings. <laughs> he does a lot of different style than Frida does. Um, but apparently they met at some point and they were friends enough that he made earrings for her, these little hand earrings, and he sent them to her, mm -hmm. which is so cool that she put them in her portrait. There's Frida again with some of her other pets. She really loved animals. So you're gonna see animals in a lot of her pictures. And also, do you notice her eyebrows again? There's another portrait of Frida that she painted her four pet monkeys, her little spider monkey friends. And this big flower in the background next to her head is called a bird of paradise. A very, very fancy big flower that looks super cool in this painting. It gives a more colorful background. So here is an actual photo of Frida. And I love this picture. It was used on the cover of Vogue magazine. And uh, then there was a spread inside with pictures of her and some of her artwork, which is super cool. This is a really famous picture of her. And this is the artist we're gonna talk about today who made a portrait of Frida. This is Charlie Lazansky. She and her hu husband, Tomas Lazansky, they are the ones whose artwork is on display at the Museum of Art right now. So go check it out because it's awesome. But I want you to notice in the background of Charlie's art studio where she's been painting and doing all sorts of different things, there is a portrait of Frida right here in the back and another one over this shoulder, or right on top of her head actually, back here. So Charlie really likes to do portraits of people and she's done several portraits of Frida. So this is the one, oh, I'm gonna move this guy. Um, this is the portrait of Frida that we have on display at the Museum of Art right now. And I wish you could see it in person because it's so much cooler. If you can see it in person, please go check it out at the museum. There's some close-ups I can give you to give you an idea. This is not just a painting. This is not just a drawing. This is all, oops, this is all sorts of different things. So this is next to the original photo that inspired it. So here's a close-up of some of Charlie's drawing of Frida. She put her signature right on the arm. This is some of the colors that she used to sketch. Here's some of the stuff that's on Frida's shawl and a dress in the picture. So she, I don't know if you can tell, it's hard to see, but this part back here that's, that's Frida's shawl in the picture is actually pieces of paper that are cut super tiny into strips. And then Charlie wove them together, almost like if you're weaving a basket so that now it looks like fabric to look like a shawl on Frida's shoulders. She also used, you can see this is real lace on top of what's on the background. She used a real piece of, I think this is real jewelry, real beads anyway, to make a ring. And there's even a little bit of lace on top of that. So it matches her outfit. There's some more lace right over her eyebrows. 
Mm -hmm. There's some lace that has beading on it. So this is layers and layers of stuff. So just wanted to share with you what you'll see if you come to the Museum of Art. And that's just one of Charlie's portraits. Charlie and her husband, Tomas, both did tons of portraits and they're on display right now. Definitely go check them out because there's all kinds of fun people. If you were with us last month for Doodlebugs in May, we did another one of Charlie's portraits of Amanda Gorman, the poet. So next month is gonna be Edgar Allan Poe, like I mentioned, another one of the portraits from that exhibition. Definitely check them out. So today I have a story about Frida. This is almost a brand new book. This only just came out a couple of months ago and I love it. So if you haven't already, go check it out at the, the libraries. I bet your local library has a copy by now. It's called Paintbrushes for Frida. This is, um, it's got some, pictures in it, some illustrations that are inspired by some of Frida's actual artwork. So the, the pictures that I showed you earlier, keep an eye out. Pictures, or excuse me, paintbrushes for Frida. Nothing is going to plan this morning. Frida wants to get up, but she can't. Her back hurts and her legs refuse to obey her. She calls her husband from the bottom of her bed. Querido, my dear, can you help me, please? I want to paint. Silence. Diego has gone out. She's all by herself. Doesn't that house look familiar? La Casa Azul, as she called it, the blue house. Oh, look who that is. It's one of her spider monkeys. The curtains are drawn. Frida tries to sit upright and put on the light on her nightstand. A sharp pain shoots through her body and she knocks over the tray standing nearby. Fruit falls and rolls across the room. The paintbrush jar lies on the floor, broken into pieces. Frida clenches her fists as well as her teeth. Her blue house now seems to be coated in black. What do you think that means? Room. What? Messy. Things messy. It might really... be messy. She seems really sad, though. Have you ever heard of anybody talking about sadness as being dark or black? I think it means that she's sad. Her shiny, cheerful blue house doesn't seem so so cheerful right now. Yeah. Outside, in a corner of the patio, Caimito, what that little spider monkey. Notices something rolling along the tiles. It's an orange. The monkey grabs it and picks up, pricks up his ears. At one o'clock, buy some tuna. That familiar voice trying to hide all its pain and anger. Who is it trying to reach? Hmm. It sounds like Frida is trying to cheer herself up. But there's Kaimito with the orange he found. And I see a bunch of little statues. I see some birds, just like in those pictures that we saw of Frida. Bedridden and with her eyes closed, Frida hums an old rhyme from her childhood. A las dos coma arroz, at two o'clock I eat rice. By the way, I do not speak Spanish, so I'm sorry if I'm saying things wrong. What else can you do other than count, count, count and be patient? Every second, every minute without painting seems like a loss to her. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock is the sound of her heart in her cage. See, she has a little cage where her heart is. The pain is holding her prisoner. Is she completely beaten? Does that remind you of the little hole that she painted in her cast? But no, behind her sunken eyelids, her imagination sets out to draw. A las tres, at three o'clock, I want a large white canvas with brushes in all sizes and a riot of colors. Ooh. 
look at what hers, what's going on in her imagination. All those flowers and cactus plants from her garden are kind of growing all over the place. One of those little statues is carrying around a brush. And look at all the flowers. Hey, do you recognize this? Just like one of those paintings that she made of herself? Yeah. Her imagination is great. Oh, this looks familiar too. Didn't we see this? That's her house, right? On the patio, Kaimito, that little monkey, eats the orange and considers thoughtfully a canvas, brushes. He knows where to find them. There are plenty in the house, plenty of paints as well. The azure blue of the walls, the blood red of the pyramid, the golden yellow of the painted wood furniture, the green cactus in the garden. But how can they be fetched? Hmm. I like this little bird right there. Worms. I couldn't tell if they were worms or if maybe they were the orange peels from Kaimito eating that little orange. Yeah. It could be both, who knows? I think it's worms. I think you might be right. Birds like worms. Yes. Frida paints in her head and continues to invent new words to her old nursery rhyme. At four o'clock, I saw the most beautiful shapes. Watermelons, papaya and pineapple, coconut, bananas and avocados. Should I have them all? Kaimito only has two hands. The little monkey is happy to have found the canvas and some brushes and this pretty box of stuff. But what about the rest? Does this studio look familiar? Doesn't that look like the one that was in the, the picture that we saw? And look what's next to the, the easel with her painting on it. There's her wheelchair. And her desk with all of her paints. It looks like Kaimito is going to go fetch the paints and stuff for her. Yes, Kaimito has an idea. He climbs up the wall and jumps onto the street. From the most beautiful tree in the quarter, his scream flies into the distance and then bounces from peak to peak before resounding in the forest. The monkey is calling his friends. Frida's voice, always coming from the foot of the bed, has already calmed down a little bit. At five o'clock, I sit down and arrange my fruit. I create a still life one full of vigor. There's all of Kaimito's friends coming over to help out. Oh la la, oh dear. If Frida saw that, Kaimito, Fulong Chang, and two other spider monkeys scour all of Mexico in search of two coconuts. They are still singing when they return home. Frida now draws with her finger on the canvas. At six o'clock, I trace the outlines of my next painting. Look, they're bringing the watermelon that she mentioned. And there's the coconuts. And I think that looks like a bird of paradise flower. Oh, and there's Frida down in the corner. In bed still. At seven o'clock, Frida does not have time to invent the sequel. Four black monkeys loaded with odds and ends make their entrance into her room full of drama and triumph. They place their jumble on the bed, a canvas, which is this, some brushes, paint, and Thanks. fruit. It's an explosion of colors and joy. They even bring a flower with them, a beautiful bird of paradise. It looks like there's already some other flowers too, which is awesome. She'll have lots of things to paint. Look at this. Does that look like one of the pictures that we saw earlier? I bet it'll look more familiar pretty soon. Frida bursts out laughing. She spreads her arms and in an embrace, the little monkey snuggles up to her. 
Thanks, Kaimito. Look at, he's hugging her. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, you and your friends. She then grabs the canvas and brushes and resumes her song. It's eight o'clock, are you ready? I'm doing our portrait. That's her getting started. And that is the final portrait. We saw that earlier, didn't we? Yeah. That's what this book is about. I love the little monkey friends that she has in there. I like that this one is grabbing a hold of her shirt and this one looks like he's, he's touching her heart. And there's that bird of paradise flower too. So, are you ready to make a picture, a portrait? Are you ready? Okay, so first off, we're gonna need paper and pencil. We're gonna start off with drawing Frida's face. So what shape is a face? Oval. Who said that? I think Valerie, it was... Oh, did you say, what did you say? What shape? Oval. An oval. So start off drawing an oval on your page. Don't make it too, too big because we wanna have room to make some stuff in the background behind her head, but you can make it sort of big so that we can see all the details. So here we go. I like to make mine a little egg shaped, but an oval is perfect. And mine are never perfectly round. And this one is actually kind of crooked. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little bit crooked. That's okay. It'll just look like she's kind of tilting her head a little bit. Now we get to add her eyes first and I'm gonna show you a little cheat cause I don't wanna spend a lot of time drawing her eyes today. So I'm just gonna draw her with her eyes closed. So about halfway you can through her face if there's a very light line going halfway through this way and halfway through this way, if you can imagine that, the eyes go right on the middle. So closed eyes look like smileys. That's what I'm doing so far. There we go. Then we get to do her bird wing eyebrows. So let's see if I can do this facing you and not looking at it. Starting in the middle, we get to make an upside down smiley and the other upside down smiley and they're touching in the middle. So I'm gonna make mine a little darker so you can see them. And I don't know if you remember this, Malena told me that this is how you learned to make birds when you're doing a landscape picture. It's basically just a squishy M. Do you see that? Yeah. A little dark. There we go. So just two upside down smileys that touch in the middle right above her eyes. Then you can do a nose and you can do your nose however you want to, but the nose goes about halfway between the eyes and the bottom. So about halfway would be here-ish. I'm gonna draw a tiny little line. And then off to the side of that little line, I'm gonna make two tiny little, come on, adjust, here we go. Two tiny go. little sideways smileys. They're very small, but that's gonna be the side of her nostrils. And then underneath them, I'm gonna make a little smiley for the bottom of her nose. There we go. And then to make it kind of look nosy, noses are hard because they're all squishy, but I'm gonna make a little kind of a line right here, just so we can see where the shadow is right there on her face. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but 
I kind of like it sometimes. And then make a little dark shadow where her nostrils are going to be right in here. A big oval line. If like you don't want to do a nose this way, you can also do a nose that's just a hook, kind of an L shape. You can do a different kind of nose if you want to do it that way, whatever you want, because this is your portrait. Then for the mouth, again, we're going to go halfway. So halfway between the bottom of the nose and the bottom of her chin, that's going to be the middle of her mouth. So from here, I'm going to draw a line kind of lightly about from the middle of her eye down and the middle of this eye down. Oops, it's kind of wiggly because I'm trying to hold it up to you, but and it's crooked because I draw everything crooked. So that's gonna be the middle. So on top, I'm gonna do just like her eyebrows, two upside down smileys that are connected in the middle. Ooh, this is very messy. Have you ever tried drawing when you can't see what you're drawing? <laughs> and then underneath that, this is the bottom of her bottom lip. So I'm gonna connect that. Ooh. It's starting to look like a mouth. Let me see if I can fix it a little bit. Okay. And again, if you want to draw your face differently than this, you do it. Cause there's no rules to this. You can draw however you want. Now, from here, there's my, <laughs> there's the mouth I draw, drew so far. So you're going to need to give her a neck and shoulders. Ooh, I can't see what I'm doing. Sort of like that. <laughs> and then maybe some ears would be nice if you want to add some earrings. So the ears start right about where the middle of the eyes are and kind of hook down. They're pretty small ears. We don't need to see lots of ears. They're actually, they should be longer, but whatever. And since my pencil doesn't have an eraser on it, it has a brush instead of an eraser. I can't erase any of my scribble marks, but that's okay. Cause I'm going to cover them up later when I color this. Now, Frida's hair was always up, right? It was pretty tall. So I'm going to start off by making it kind of curly. I'm gonna start right where her ears are actually. Give it kind of curly. And then it kind of goes around her head. Oops. Cause your hair doesn't start up here, right? It doesn't start on the top of your head. It starts down here on your forehead. So you wanna cover up some of her forehead with hair. And then I, when I get to that, I can color all of this in because her hair was very dark, but I'm not gonna bother to fill in the top part of it because I'm gonna cover that up with flowers or stickers or whatever else I wanna put on there for the background and for what she's using to decorate her hair. So, I have a different one that I started before I met up with you guys this morning so that it wouldn't look like that crazy one. Because as much as I love trying to draw without looking at it, I wasn't happy with how that looked. So this is the one that I started this morning. And I had all those little stick on gems that I showed you. So I put those on. So I gave her some earrings and a necklace, but what else could we use? I wanted a new piece of paper. I have some flower stickers. So I think I might put some flowers in her hair. I might put some of these feathers that I showed you around her. Maybe I'll turn the feathers into a bird. I don't know yet. But if you wanna color in Frida's face and her hair and her neck and her ears, now's the time. You wanna color first because it's much easier to do that now than later. And like I showed you, I'm gonna be using makeup to color her in. 
so that she's shiny. And I'm using my favorite artist's tool, my fingers. I'm just gonna yes. smear my finger all over it. And then start smearing it on here to color her in. So I'm gonna do that. You guys can start coloring and adding whatever other details you want. And then as we start getting things filled in, I will see if anybody wants to share what you're making. My fingers are gonna be super messy after this. That's how you know that you're a real artist when your hands are messy. That's not a rule, that's just what I made up. Is anybody using paints today? No. Those take a while to dry, so that's probably good. You have to wait a little longer when you use paints. Mm. Anybody using markers? Mm -hmm. I see pencils. Ooh, stamp. are you using a stamp, Miss Valerie? <gasps> You're stamping butterflies on it. That's so cool. super cool. Yeah. I like it. And we already know Frida liked butterflies because she put them in some of her paintings. All right. So here's Miss Frida with some makeup on. So she looks like she's kind of people colored right now. She should be a little bit darker, but the closest thing I had to skin color was this sort of peachy color um this one if i can get it open is kind of a purpley pinkish dark rose color i'm going to use that for her lips i don't have any red i don't think they make red eyeshadow very much but this was the closest thing i could find for her lips so she'll have dark pink lips today no. Ooh. It is really hard to control where this goes when it's on your fingers. Oof. Maybe I'll try and use my paintbrush. Hmm. Actually, my paintbrush worked pretty well. There's her, her lips. It's a little bit messy, but that's okay. I like somebody who hums while they work. I don't know who that is, but that's awesome. Moira, that's me. Ah. You know what? If it works for Snow White's uh, dwarves, for them to whistle while they work, then it definitely should work for you to hum. Now, I have this sort of gray blue color too. I think I might use a little bit of that like eyeshadow since her eyes are closed. Just put that right on her eyes. Make it a little darker. Oh, and I forgot when I was drawing this, but if you guys want to add some eyelashes, some other details to her face, do it. I might add some of that now. And since my pencil isn't very dark, I might go in with like a marker or a colored pencil that's black and give her some darker eyelashes and eyebrows. I think I made her eyelashes a little too much. They look really fringy. <laughs> It's kind of funny though. That's her so far. So her hair was really dark. I think I might use a marker for that since there's a lot of space to fill in. Pink. I want a white pink marker. Okay. Okay. This is my brown marker. I might go back and use both brown and black on my, my Frida hair. 
Because if you ever look at somebody's hair, it's almost never just one color. It's usually lots of colors. Mostly because the sun shines on it or the lights bounce off of it and it makes it look like it's different colors. We like shadows and highlights, especially on something shiny like hair. And just to make it look a little bit more like curly hair instead of straight hair, I'm curling, I'm drawing my scribbles in her hair in big circles. It looks messy right now, but it'll look better in a minute. Hopefully my brown marker doesn't dry up. Don't you hate when that happens? What are you guys going to draw in the background behind Frida's head? Miss okay, Valerie okay. has butterflies behind hers. What are you guys going to put in yours? What are you going to put in the background? Is anybody doing monkeys? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Oh, okay. That means somebody could make monkeys. Um, she had some flowers and, and leafy plants in the background of some of hers. What else did she have? I have two brown markers because one of them has a black lid and I thought it was a black marker. Shucks. I'm going to have to use my Sharpie. These are stinky. I don't recommend them all the time. But if I want black hair for my Frida, I'm going to have to use it. Ooh, stinky. You are doing a nice pink tint. Does anybody want to show us what you're doing so far? Well, just a minute. Not quite yet. I know sometimes you don't want to share until it's done. So if you don't want to share yet, that's okay. Ooh, this is a stinky marker. Stinky, stinky, stinky. It's a good thing I picked really heavy paper for mine because I am soaking it all up with marker juice. It's making it want to tear and that's not good. <sighs> Lots of times Frida had her hair braided or in a bun. So if you can draw that, that would be awesome. I'm not entirely sure I know how to do that. I'd have to look at some pictures first. So mine, I just made curly. Okay. So far, so good. How's yours coming? Good. Good. Let's see. Okay, so while you guys are waiting, if there's anybody who's watching this later on and wants some ideas, um, I'm going to show you how you can turn. Ooh, that looks awesome, Elena. Did you have some gems too? Yeah. We have nice. Some. Okay. Too. I used some for the earrings and for a flower in her hair. I love that. And she's usually shown with something in her hair. Yep. She loved to decorate her hair just like everything else. Oh my goodness, Madeline, look at that. <laughs> it's a pink tent. Oh, all right. 
I'm, I'm just going to show you if you have any of these little cupcake uh, papers to how to turn it into a flower. I just kind of smooshed it out flat and it already kind of looks like a flower, but then I'm going to take my finger and poke it into the middle and squish it. I'm just pinching this part in the middle. So now it's kind of more like a flower. I'm going to take this pinchy part and smoosh it a little bit and put some glue on it and then just stick it on my paper. If you have a glue stick, that should work with this too. There we go. So I have it pinched up with a little bit of glue right on the end of it. I'm gonna take it and smoosh it right on the side of her hair. And then once I get it smooshed on, I can kind of spread it back out a little bit. So now she has one flower. If you want to, you can even color the edges of your cupcake wrapper to make it look like the edges of the flower are a different color. Let's see. What else? Oops. These feathers. I have so many feathers, you guys, you don't even know. Ah! And once you open them, they go flying everywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna use a bunch of them because I have a lot. They come in so many different colors. Like the this is here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She's gonna look like she has a bird sitting on her head with all these feathers. And I didn't do it because I don't have a whole lot of time, but if you have more time, you can color in the background behind her before you stick your stuff on. That kind of makes it even more colorful, which is always nice. Oh goodness, so much feather floof flying around here right now, you guys, you don't even know. My feathers are going off the page. They don't even all fit on the page. Just a couple more. <laughs> okay, I have to show you guys, look. <laughs> she looks a little bit like she's gonna do a dance she looks like she's gonna do a, a big number um in vegas oh you have feathers too molina oh my goodness i'm making You're one of those special flowers a bird of paradise oh cool see that's a good idea i didn't even think of that this is gonna look I really look cool are you two red feathers and one little blue feather. I I really like it so far. And I have this weird ribbon that's kind of a wire, but it's fluffy ribbon. I'm not sure what this was supposed to be for, but I think I'm gonna turn it into like a little flower. So I'm just gonna wind it up in a big circle. That look? I don't know. It doesn't look like a flower so much as a hairball right now. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'll keep thinking about that. All right. We are closing in on the end of our class for today. Does anybody want to share what you've made so far? I'm just going to take around my pickles. <laughs> what is the tape going to be for? 
know. It doesn't matter. I don't know. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be for anything. So I just wanted to show you guys, too. If you have any scrap paper, you can turn those into little flowers, too. I just tore a little piece Ooh. off. Ooh, Miss Valerie. That is awesome. You had a bird sticker, bird, many bird stickers. Oh, that's cool. I love her earrings. That looked really awesome. And the best part about this, you guys, is that even after our class is over for today, you can just keep adding stuff, however much you want, as long as it'll fit on your paper. You can keep going on and on and on. And then if you run out of space on your paper, you just start another one. So I ripped off a section of that colored paper and I smushed it into kind of a flower shape. That's what this is. I might add some sticker flowers too, but I'm kind of like the smushy paper. This is fun. Push it into a sort of circle shape. Some glue. All right. Miss Odessa, do you want to show us what you're working on before we have to say goodbye? Okay, go for it. Um, <gasps> oh my goodness, I love it. And you're working on cardboard, which is smart because it's very strong. I like that stuff. I need to use more cardboard. That looks amazing. Oh, Miss Madeline. I'm going to show it to you once. Awesome. Once more. Once more. It looks amazing. You guys are working so hard, which I love. And you're all really creative, which is awesome. You know that creativity is like a muscle. You just got to keep using your creativity whenever you can. It's like practice. Yeah. All right, before we say goodbye, here's one more chance if anybody wants to share what you're doing before well, we leave. I'm, trying to, I'm making a little monkey. <gasps> ah! I'm a flower. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, I, I love monkeys and Frida's monkeys are hilarious. So I love that you're adding that to yours. All right. Anybody else? I see Miss Odessa hunting around in a baggie for some fun stuff. I'm adding a little bit more glue to another piece of torn off paper to make another poofy paper flower thing. Oops. And the glue is all over my fingers, so they want to stick to my fingers. There's mine so far. Let's see if I can get it so that it's not too no, bright. There we go. There she is so far. But I think I'm going to keep working on her. If you guys ever want to share with us what your final thing looks like after class has ended, you can always send it to me at the museum or share with us on social media. If you go to the crma.org website, you can find out how to email me, Miss Erin. And I would be happy to see what these look like when they're all done. I can't wait. If you ever want to see them up on our Facebook page, we can share them too. So we'd love that. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, I think we, we've already lost one, but Valerie, thank you for joining us. Miss Odessa, that looks amazing. Awesome. And Miss Madeline and Ms. Malena, thank you, thank you. Hopefully we will see you next time for Edgar Allan Poe. Stop by the museum. Do I have I did a paint? Uh, all paint. <laughs> thank you. It turned out awesome. Thanks, ladies. We'll see you next bye. time. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thanks, ladies. We'll see you next bye. time. Bye. 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 Bye.